Welcome to EASD TV. Now, there are some things that appear, appear very promising, and yet they don't quite make the spotlight and slip back into the shadows again. Amelin was one of those things. Amelin is now back in the spotlight, and it had a session all of its own at the Congress. And with me to talk about it are Thomas Lutz of the University of Zurich and also Kirsten Ram from Nova Nordisk. So Thomas, first of all, what is amelin and why did it disappear? So amelin is a physiologically relevant hormone. It comes from the beta cells in the pancreas, just like insulin. And whenever the uh, beta cells produce and secrete insulin after a meal, for example, or when blood glucose increases, amylin is also co-secreted. And uh, early uh, research indicated that it may have very important metabolic effects, but somehow um, it did never catch up the interest of many basic research labs. There were a few around the world who... Um, continued to doing research on the basics and on the physiology of amyl in action. We were one of these labs, but it was not as popular as some other gut hormones, which caught more attention. This has changed in recent years because um, obviously people realized that amylin may also be a very, very interesting target to treat obesity and diabetes. Now, Kirsten, one of your roles at Nova Nordisk is to take things that are physiologically interesting and to turn them into medicines. Was there a difficulty with amylin? Well, amylin is a, a very um, non-drogable hormone, you can say, because it's sticky, it sticks together, and absolutely not suitable for making pharmaceutical preparations. So it, it has taken a lot of clever chemistry to fix that um, now we have very stable amylin analogs, and fortunately more and more uh, scientists and companies are seeing the potential in amylin. So there are a number of amylin analogs um, coming along, and, and of, of course we think the physiology can do a lot in the metabolic diseases and, and diabetes and obesity which send off this uh, conference. So now the whole amylin field has had this boost because you've now got... Uh, effective medicines, yeah. where are you going to go with amylin? You've kept the faith all these years. <laughs> I did keep the faith, that's very true. So I think we still need to find out more about the exact mechanisms of action of amylin. I think this is um, still something that has to be investigated more. We also need to understand better how amylin may interact with other uh, drugs that are um, also on the market for the treatment of obesity and diabetes. So how these really interact in the brain, for example, what the advantage of combining different um, hormones may be, whether we can reduce side effects by understanding better the exact mechanisms of action. I think there's still a lot that needs to be done, um, but at the moment we are in a good position to say that it seems to be a very, very promising candidate. It's funny, isn't it, in uh, diabetes, as in all other uh, areas, you start off with one drug, and then you add another, and you end up with, with combinations. Is that what you see happening with amylin? Um, eventually, amylin may also be used as a monotherapy. I think time will have to show, but I think there is really good potential when it is combined with other treatment options. One amylin analog actually has been introduced to the market for the treatment of diabetes mellitus almost 20 years ago in combination with insulin. So not alone, but in combination with insulin. So there's also already one drug out. And um, based on that experience and what we learned in the last 20 years, we now uh, should be able to develop even better drugs. Yeah, and I could maybe add... So you could say that amylin has lived in the shadows of DLP-1. Yes, I was going to say. Yeah, <laughs> for many years, even though they were actually discovered the same year. But I think um, now it's kind of becoming clear that amylin and DLP-1 are probably best friends because they really kind of work well together and, and add the effects together. So I, I think that's a good match. Uh, and now they're both getting sunshine. And, and we <laughs> amylin fans, we really like that. <laughs> Do you feel that your time has come now? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. No, I, I think it's great because it is such a 
wonderful hormone that can do so many things also different from DLP-1. So, um, so tell me about the differences. Well, I mean, the, the difference is that it, it seems like it actually has a good effect on insulin sensitivity, which is important in diabetes. Also, potentially, it could do something for beta cell rescue by um, kind of decreasing those amyloid plaques that are det detrimental. So I, I think it could really be a revolution uh, in diabetes treatment with different modes of action. So and are you suggesting that it could be used, for instance, once you've uh, diagnosed uh, type 1, but before too many beta cells are destroyed, that you might use it in that situation? No, it is a type 2. Uh, so it's a type 2? It's a type 2 thing because it's kind of the, the destruction of the beta cells in type 2, not, not in type 1. Mm -hmm. But there, I, it, it definitely, I think, holds a great um, potential. And there also, I mean, cardiovascular benefits, we have discussed also yesterday, what about quality of weight loss, which is becoming a great topic as the kind of medicines make you lose more and more weight. It's important to keep the quality. And there we have potentially some peripheral effects of amylin, both on bone and on uh, muscle mass, that, that could be uh, upsides. Yes, because you don't want to lose too much muscle mass. Exactly, or bone, mm. for that matter. Be the super fan that you are of amylin, mm. and, and tell us uh, any more, uh, any further additional benefits you might see. Because after all, I guess, if the body is producing these uh, hormones side by side, mm. there, is, there is method there. That's actually a very good and uh, and difficult to answer question. So we have many hormones that are released when we eat. And um, at the behavioral level, they seem to do similar things. So they make us feel satiated. Um, Emeline is one of them. GLP-1 is, is one of them. Um, CCK, cholecystokinin is one of them. So there are several hormones doing similar things. But each one of them then has additional effects that may, in the end, complement their action. GLP-1 increases um, insulin secretion. That's something that amylin probably doesn't do. Amylin may have um, positive effects on bone, as Kirsten just said. So there's several specific effects of each of them, and probably the cocktail altogether makes um, the control of metabolism more efficient. So finally, what would you like to say to all those diabetologists out there about amylin? What would your one message about amylin be? Kirsten, let's start with you. Yeah, I, I would, my one message would be, um, I think you have something to look forward to that can really make a difference for patients for the better new opportunities is coming with a fantastic biology. And I would like to invite everybody to learn more about amylin biology because it has been under the spotlight um, of very few people, and it's very important that people realize its potential in physiology, but also in treatment. Well, it's very lucky because, that you've said that because you can find out about the biology of amylin if you are watching ESD TV subscription, because you can actually go and listen to the presentations that you gave about amylin and see for yourself. And I, I know that you hope that everybody is as convinced as you are about Avalon. That's it for the moment. We'll be back in a little while.